It is the Mid-Triassic, a time when all the Earth's continents are formed into one supercontinent, Pangaea. It is a hot and dry world, and here in South Africa under the shade of a conifer tree, a small predator is biding his time. He is a species of cynodont, a family of synapsid that will one day evolve into mammals. In the Triassic, they are fairly common, but rarely get above one meter long. This one is a predator, though far from top of the food chain. He has been scoping out a nest of some kind for half an hour, waiting to see if its mother is still around. But so far, there has been no movement whatsoever. Now he pushes himself out of cover, but not before cautiously scanning the area. He sees nothing. He steadily crawls forward until his entire body is exposed in the clearing. He scans once again with his eyes and ears. Still nothing. He rounds the nest to make sure that nothing is hiding between any trees or rocks, and then eyes the nest. Once again he scans the area, but still nothing. In fact, the whole hillside seems empty. He digs into the nest, removing a layer of twigs and leaves and quickly finds one of the eggs. He grabs it in his jaws and then dashes back into the cover of the trees. You can never be too careful. Cracking open the egg reveals why there is no mother. The embryo inside never properly developed. When none of the eggs hatched, the resident mother must have left. There are many reasons why this may have happened, but for the cynodont, it means he gets a free meal. At least that's what would have happened if upon grabbing a second egg, a new creature lumbered up to the nest. Steadily stomping into the clearing, drawn by the smell of cracked egg, is an Erythrosuchian. Its disproportionately large head alone is bigger than the Cynodont, and when it reaches the nest, it opens its jaws, puts its head down sideways, and picks up the whole nest in one bite. Despite being a pure predator, it swallows the contents of the nest, twigs and all. The belligerent reptile then drags itself forward, its hunger barely satiated. For the Cynodont, this is extremely annoying. Those eggs would have provided him with a whole day's worth of nutrients. And easy pickings like that are rare in this arid and competitive world. He snorts, and then waddles off into the undergrowth. He had to get back to hunting. Life in the Triassic is hard, and only the most tenacious survive. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a very important family of animals, the Cynodonts. Cynodonts first appeared in the late Permian period and continue on to this day. How is that possible you ask? Well, all mammals are descended from the Cynodont clade. Yes, all mammals, from monotremes to marsupials to placental mammals, even us. So it's a good thing they survived the Permian and Triassic mass extinctions, otherwise we may not be here. Anyway, let's learn more about our ancient ancestors. Cynodonts are often put in the fold of missing link, because they are a group that is evolving from reptiles to mammals. And while some of them are more derived than others, they all have traits of reptiles and mammals. The family appeared in the late Permian era, and was able to survive that era's mass extinction, most likely from their ability to dig and create tunnels. They are believed to have first appeared in what is now South Africa, though their fossils can be found on every continent except Australia. In the Triassic is when they diversified, creating different lifestyles including herbivores, insectivores and carnivores. They had a mostly splayed out posture and laid eggs like reptiles, but had multiple types of teeth, had a bulged brain case at the rear of their skull, and likely were warm-blooded like mammals. Not many of them had fur, however, as their jaws show a lack of the muscles to support strong cheek muscles and lips. These are needed to support whiskers, so it's unlikely the rest of their body had fur. With that being said, some later species did evolve these traits, and after all, they did become true mammals. They also did not have external ears. Cynodonts eventually developed a secondary palate in the roof of their mouths. 
This causes airflow from the nostrils to travel to a position in the back of the mouth instead of directly through it, allowing cynodonts to chew and breathe at the same time. This characteristic is present in all mammals. It is important as it supports the theory that these species were nursing their young, and therefore that the females were producing milk for them. There are over a dozen species of cynodont, but today we will be focusing on the most well-known, Thyraxodon. It lived at the beginning of the Triassic, and has many of the previously mentioned traits, such as a splayed posture, lack of fur or whiskers, and different types of teeth. It was around the size of a modern fox, and likely fed on small vertebrates and insects. It's most notable because of how much evidence points to it being a burrower. Some fossils have been found in burrows, and the flexibility of its skeleton was such that it could tuck its head underneath its hind limbs, an adaptation for living in cramped spaces and for preserving heat. The ability to create a shelter to get away from the extreme weather and disasters that were happening during the end of the Permian era may have been the key to the species' survival. One fossilised burrow shows a Thyraxodon that had died in its burrow, but it wasn't alone. An amphibian, Brumistega, was also in the burrow, and though it did have injuries, these were not inflicted by the Thyraxodon. The two seemed to have died together when floodwaters entered the burrow. Either the Thyraxodon tolerated the amphibian sharing its burrow, or the Brumistega entered the burrow seeking temporary shelter, and the Thyraxodon was in some sort of hibernation, and unable to remove the intruder. Either way, it is a fascinating fossil that is almost complete, and raises many questions of prehistoric interactions between species. The Cynodon family flourished in the Triassic, and receded in the Jurassic, eventually evolving into all modern mammals, that occupied small niches at the bottom of the food chain, under the shadow of the dinosaurs. But being small and staying out of sight is no doubt part of their great success, not just for when they were alive, but for their descendants as well. But what do you think of the Cynodonts? Do you see them as more mammal or reptile? Which lesser known species would you like me to do a video on next? And until then, thank you for watching.